<laughs> All right, do it. Hello, Mr. Ed here. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Ed. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Sammy. Hello, Mr. Ed here. Hello, Mr. Ed here. Go. Oh, okay. All right, you got it? Go. Hello, Hello Mr. Ed here. Perfect. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Ed here. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Ed here. <laughs> Hello, Rocket Scientist Steve here. <laughs> right, you ready? We win. Go. Hello. Mr. Ed here. <laughs> you ready? Go. Yeah. Hello, Mr. Ed here. <laughs> ready, whatever you are. Come on, Mr. Ed. Ed. No, no. Hello, Mr. Ed here. No. Okay, hit it. Hello, Mr. Ed here. Oh, that's perfect. All right, hit it. Hello, Mr. Ed here. <laughs> okay, anytime you're ready. Hello, Mr. Ed here. <laughs> So anytime you're ready, Randy. Okay. Hello, Mr. Ed here. <laughs> Go. Hello, Mr. Ed. Hello, Mr. Ed. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Ed here. Oh, yeah. Hello, Mr. Ed here. Today is December 8, 2018, and can you guess where I am right now? Yeah, well. We in Sulphur, Louisiana. What are we doing here, JB? Talking about pigs? <laughs> no, we're not talking about pigs. How pigs fuck? No, we're oh. talking about bees. Yeah, that's right. We're at the Louisiana State Bee Association Convention here in Sulphur, Louisiana. And uh, we got JB Brown right here, right here. Right. This is Jennifer Brown's husband. But don't tell everybody. Okay. And, and uh, so you might have seen him. He was in one of my other videos way back, uh, probably last year, about saving some uh, bees that were in a barn. And uh, today, though, we're we're talking bees. We're talking all kinds of bees. We've been here. I've been today is. Saturday already. We've been here two days already and lots of stuff is going on and uh, in this afternoon I'll actually be doing a speech and uh, we'll, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll talk about, uh, see, uh, post out on the video and uh, show you that speech. But for right now we're going to go ahead and uh, show you some of the other stuff going around, maybe show some of the guests and uh, uh, some of these vendors, Jim. Look at and sure, yeah, we got plenty of vendors plenty here vendors. too. Plenty so vendors. what do you got to say, Jacob? Oh man, just, just have a great day and I hope you do a wonderful job. <laughs> so by the grace of God, this convention will have a, a, a good turnout, we'll do everything well in here, and uh, everything's going to turn fun, so we'll just uh, keep on rolling along. I'm with Kelly Beekeeping, uh -huh. Larson, Kentucky. All right. Yes. And so, so how, many, how many of the conventions have you been to? Um, I do about 20 or so a year. Oh my goodness. Including National AVF, EAS, and HAS. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for coming, and, and uh, I'm going to put you on the video. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank Earl, you. Earl King's tonight. Thank you, folks. My buddies at Man Lake, they're set up here as well. And they're selling all their, their stuff. I, I actually talked to talk Troy yesterday, and I'm uh, talking about all their stuff. We'll see you all, Cece. One, one of the first things that everybody will think about is, well, what do you use to put in your swarm traps, and where do you put them? Those are always the, the, the big questions. What do you use, and where do you place them? Um, what I use, and, and uh, what happens, generally what happens in the winter time, you're gonna get dead outs um, from, from the winter. And so, what better way to use your dead out than use that mop, that hive, as, as a trap? So that's, that's the first thing. That, uh, last year we, we had probably, 25, maybe 30 get outs uh, from our boxes. And um, so there's very little cleanup that you have to do from a dead out in the wintertime. Uh, in the summertime, that's a different story. But in the wintertime, they're basically clean. So you may have to clean them up a little. There's no one way to set a trap or make a trap. There's all kinds of ways of doing it. Myself, I like using uh, a 10 frame box because. I think that I want to catch up a big swarm of bees. I don't want to put them in a little five frame or an eight frame. I want to put them in a full frame box. Uh, and I, I run all deep frames, all deep supers. And so that's what I'm going to use as my trap. Um, and I'll take my, my 10 frame boxes and then I'll use those as my bait boxes. What do you put in, in the box? So definitely, I think one of the, the everybody should at least put lemongrass on. That is, that is a, a most definite thing. Now there's uh, other kind of attractants, uh, Swarm Commander, I know that's one of them. But 
I, I just use lemongrass. You can go to any health food store and get lemongrass oil, and you can put that in. The other thing that I've, I've, I've found that works really, really well is using old equipment. The older the equipment you have to set as a trap, the better, because it's, it's already got the smell of bees in it. Um, and so the, the scout bees, they're, they're looking for this. this they're looking for um, some kind of scent. So old equipment, so that means old boxes, old frames, and, and really, the really good attractor is old brood comb. In fact, the older the brood comb, the better. They, they really like that black comb. Not that it's worth anything except for in a swarm trap. It's really, really good to, uh, to put in a swarm trap because it's got the good smell that the bees want to know that they're attracted to. And uh, so it's the lemongrass oil, the old equipment, and uh, the uh, old, old brood comb. Now that's, that's basically what I do. And so in, in the dead owls, when you have a dead owl, you already got all the stuff right there. It's, it's, it's there already. To me, catching swarms, the earlier you put your box out, paint your box, and set it out, the better chance you're going to have of catching the first ones, which are always going to be the best ones. They're going to be the biggest, the largest in size. And the other thing that's really good is only going to be one queen. There's only be one queen in that swarm. Uh, once you, as, as the season progresses, once you get it to um, end, end of March, April, and by May, you, you're going to have, when you have a swarm, there's going to be multiple queens in there. Quite often, you know, multiple queens in, this, in the swarm. So the, the other thing, the other advantage of catching those first swarms is that she's going to come out of that, out of the uh, season, and she's going to be ready to start away. The, uh, Later on in the, in, the, um, in the season, when you get the, the, the swarm queens that come out, you still got an initial waiting period of time for it to start laying and then for the brood to hatch, for the hot to, to build up. Uh, but if you catch these, these uh, old queens, man, I mean, they, they'll, start, they'll start laying with that comb that's in the box already. They're ready to go to work. She's got a workforce with her. And depending on the size of the swarm that that you happen to, to catch, uh, you could be pulling honey off of that, that swarm, you know, in, in July, you could be pulling honey. So how do you pick a spot um, that, that you're gonna place it? When I first started doing it, uh, setting the traps out at the Abbey, I had no idea. I just said, well, this place looks good, so I stuck the box in. And it, it worked out pretty good, because that first year, out of the five traps I set, I caught three swarms. So I said, like, man, this is easy. It's not easy, it really isn't. The, the, the placement of a box, just because it looks good to you, you know, you might be right in the middle of a blackberry patch or, you know, right in the tablet tree that it's, you know, everything is, everything just looks great and you'll be rebating that box every two weeks. You know, it's, nothing ever comes to it. Not only do I, I set the traps, uh, uh, catch swarms from, but I also do cutouts. And that's really where my, my big advantage comes in, in uh, where, knowing where to place my traps. I, I place traps where I know bees are. So if you know where bees are, that's where you want to, that's where you want to um, place your trap. And in the sense that you know where bees are, if you walk the woods, you know where there's a, a tree with bees in it. Um, if you know where a beekeeper is, and it's kind of like on the edge of property, you can put it up outside of his property, go catch his bees, you know, or her bees. Um, but knowing that there's bees in the location, I judge the, the, the worth of a, of a location by how many robber bees show up. Um, if, if there's a lot of robber bees that, that come to the cutout as I'm, I'm doing it, I'm saying I'm going to be setting a box here for sure in the springtime. By doing the removals, I, I, I cover a lot of area. Probably 50, 60 miles is, is, is my travel. And, um, and I get a lot of phone calls about removals. And um, when I go there, I, I'm, I'm scouting for, for setting my traps. Because I'd rather catch a swarm than do it in cutout, because the cutouts are really hard to do. Whereas uh, catching a swarm of bees, man, it's just like set a box up and catch bees. My problem is I love catching the swarms. It's like it's, it's, uh, it's going back and getting those boxes and 
putting them back on those things because I get so busy, um, I forget to go and get the uh, go and get the swan trap. And and when you set 40 traps, that's a uh, <laughs> that's a lot of there's a lot of ways you can forget. Um, in fact, I've got even right now there's probably at least six traps that that are out there that are still out there. And not only are they still out there, I've added another deep soup to them all. So they, and they, they probably weigh, oh my goodness, at least 80, 90 pounds each. And, and that's when it becomes difficult is to remove a 90 pound box, you know, when it's above your head like this. It, 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 it does become difficult to do that. You know, look, uh, setting your trap is, is where your, your, your real challenge goes. And, and I, I liken it to the fact of, of, of fishing. Because when, when, when you first start fishing a new area, you don't, you don't know where to fish. You just go and that spot looks good, you start fishing. If you don't catch any fish there, you move. You fish until you, you get the fish. And you keep coming back to that one spot. Well, the bees are the same way. They keep coming back to that same spot. And once you know the area that you're fishing in, you're, you're, um, you increase the odds of, of bringing fish home with you. What's it? It's no different than, than catching swarms. When you know the area that you're gonna set traps at, it's almost assuredly the bees are gonna come come there. Not only are they gonna come to that area, they, they, believe it or not, they will land on the same tree often. That uh, you can you can set your trap right on where if you've taken a swarm off of a tree, you can set your trap right there. And the bees, I don't know why it is, the bees will go to the, uh, the same tree or the same spot on the tree. I'll leave, there. I'll leave that box there until I see um, the bees coming with pollen. Once they start coming with pollen, you can take them at that point. And that's, just, that's why uh, I, sometimes I will take my boxes because, well, I'm waiting for them to start taking pollen. Now I know they're taking pollen, but I'm doing something else and I can't get back to them. And now I'm bringing another deep to put on top of because they done built that bottom one out so much and they need more space. Because I don't want them to swarm me either. Oh, you know, I said that the, the things that, that I use to bait them is the, the lemongrass, the old cone, the old equipment. But I, I also attribute the, uh, the success to catching swarms. Um, I, I say a prayer to catch swarms. So I always, I always ask for blessings on the on the trap, and I think that might really be the, 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 the really uh, reason of uh, success. Yeah, because you know when you got hard work, it's all downhill from that point. But another thing that that um, you know an advantage that that I have is, is the position that I find myself in at the app. Once once the public um, knew that the Abbey had bees. They had a beekeeper that would um, go to people's houses to rescue bees. That it, it, the word just kind of got around. So we would, we would, especially in swarm season, uh, we would get a lot of calls. And and it didn't matter what I was doing. I'd get in the truck and I'd go. I had the truck was ready to go. You know, and once I got the phone call, it's five minutes and I'm on the way. I don't have to load it up because swarms don't pay. That's that's the bad thing about a swarm. They, they're here one minute, you turn around and they're gone. So you better, you better react fast um, if, if they're hanging on a tree or hanging on something. Because it's not to say that they're going to be there um, in 20 minutes. So I, I would get up and go. And uh, I, I probably, at least on three occasions, by the time I got there, the bees were gone. And ain't nothing more discouraging than when you drive 30 miles. And there's nothing there. So miss that. But and then at the same time, there's nothing better when you pull up and there's this big old ball of bees hanging on a bush this high off the ground. <laughs> so what do you do? What do you do when you when you uh, <laughs> yeah, usually it's 50 feet up in the So what do you do when you when you see a, a nice swarm of bees in a bush this high and it's hanging this low? What what do you do? So what I do, I get my box. When, when, when I go get swarms that are hanging, um, I, I bring nukes because I don't know what size they are. And I bring a 10 frame. With, and that's, like I say, I don't use 8 frames or 
Uh, I, said, I, you know, I like the tech frame. I want to give them room. And uh, what I do, as soon as I get there, I take my car. I have a, a 10 by 10 car for my lay it on the ground. I lay it on the ground. And this is, this is a really good trick um, because whether you shake the bees off the bush, whether you grab them by hand and put them in the box, there's going to be bees. There are going to be bees that are on the that, that wind them on the ground, and it's a lot harder for bees to crawl on grass and walk into your box than it is for the bees to walk on the top and, and get into your box. And if any of y'all have seen how bees react once you place a box down on the ground and they're already on the ground, it's just phenomenal to watch the bees just launch right into the box. When you set the box on the ground and you grab that first handful of bees and you lay it, you just lay it right across the frame, the frame zip. So since your frames are sitting like this in your box, and you lay the bees and that way they can drop down in between the frames. And Don't shake your head. That's the way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you, you lay the bees in there and they'll start going in. And you want to get, you want to get bees in your box. Uh, you know, at least two handfuls of bees before, you, if you're going to shake the bush, you want to get bees in the box already because you don't want them just to hit the ground and what? Next. So they have bees in the box and they're already flying around a little, coming down, maybe even coming in out of the entrance. So that way, if, if they have the, the other ones coming, they're already they're already buddies in there. So they say, well, let's check that out. So, I, I still I still will grab as many handfuls of bees uh, as possible, and, and really the reason I'm doing that is I'm looking for the queen. I'm looking for the queen, and I always and I mean always have at least one queen catcher um, in my pocket with me. And uh, I couldn't tell you how many times I, I found the queen uh, three or four years ago when I really wasn't. I would catch the queens, oh my god, a maid put her in there, throw all the bees in there, close up, and, and go. And I get back to the abbey, and two days later, boom, all the bees gone, even though I still got the queen caged in the, in the box. They're gone. Why? Because there's another queen in there, and they, they took off with her, and they left her. Well, I mean, I still used her, but it, it's, it's, it's frustrating when, when, when that happens to you, and, but it's part of the deal. So now, I look especially starting in May, I'm looking for more than one queen because I always think there's more than one in here. And there generally is more than one in here. So I'll grab the handfuls of bees, lay them in there, and if once I get enough bees in there and it starts getting harder picking to get the bees off the bush or tree or wherever, then I'll, I'll, I'll shake them in. And when you get that shake in there, uh, you want to try to drop them right on top of your frames. And uh, if not, it's okay because they're going to land on the tarp and at that point, they're just going to start walking, walking into the box, especially if you have the queen. And if I have the queen, I'll put her, I'll put her in the cage right on top of the frames and then it, it's just like, it's a, it's a done deal. You're going to get these bees. You can also catch uh, uh, swarms, you know, way up high too. And for that, uh, I use a, a um, an extension pole with a, a, a five pound bucket on it, a five gallon bucket. It's a big bucket, it's deep, you know, five gallon. And, and it weighs a lot. Now my extension pole, what I use, I use a, uh, a it's called a kite pole. And those are the uh, poles that um, on beaches, when, when people go fly their kites on the beach, they'll stick these long poles in the sand and the, the kites just fly out there. And this thing probably extends Oh man, 25 feet maybe. So I took the, the last three seconds off because it was too thin. That five gallon bucket weighs a lot, especially when you have that big pole extended. Um, so I took the, the, the bottom, the top three off, and I anchored the bucket inside on the end of the, it's a fiberglass pole. It's pretty lightweight, um, but it doesn't matter. Once you get that thing up 15 feet, and that bucket this weighs about four pounds, it's kind of hard to do that. So you know, it takes a little. It takes a little getting used to, it. and it's hard to align that bucket to where that swarm. So you look good. You're looking. Does that does that look right? And 
And then once you get it under, you jam that uh, bucket underneath the swarm. And ideally, you're going to have the swarm drop into that bucket. And then you, you can just bring it down and, and, and proceed from there. But quite often, when you jam that bucket up there, that that bucket just doesn't go right where you want it to go, and you might only get half the, the, the clump of bees. And guess where the other half go? You. So you really, I've learned where your bees do when you're um, when you're uh, under using that bucket and you're underneath them. Because it's, I'm telling you, I think it, it happened at least three times this year. I mean, I said, there's no way that's going to happen. So trust me, it, it, it will happen. And when they're, when they're falling down, they're going to land right on you because you're right underneath them, and they're going to land right on you. So wear your bee suit, at least your veil for sure. Um, and at the same time, you want to have your, your box pretty close to you. You can't be right next to you because you need to stand back and you'll be able to get the box down and into it. And what I like to do is once, that, once I get the bucket down, because it's so deep, it's amazing, the bees, you would think that as soon as the bees hit the bucket, they're going to just all fly out. But they don't do that. Some of them do. But the majority of them, guess what they do? They walk up the sides. That's what they're going to do. They're going to walk up the sides. So what I do at that point, I'm right next to my box. I'm down on the ground on one knee, and I'm, I've got my head in that bucket. And you know what I got while my head is in the bucket? I'm looking for the queen. I'm looking for the queen. And I got my queen cage right there. So it's, a, it's amazing. You don't really have to look on the set size of the box because that queen is going to be in the bottom. She's not going to be coming right up. She's going to stay down in the bottom. So that's where I'm looking. I'm letting all the bees come up, and I'm looking at the bottom. And I couldn't tell you how many times I found them right at the bottom. And you just take the cage, boom, grab it. The thing is, and a lot of times this will happen, you look up in the tree, and there's bees, but I got the queen. Guess what? There's another queen up there. So you just repeat the process. I, I did um, one of them. I, I did it six times. Then I finally got. I got one of them. But this one just kept going up. I had the queen, but they kept going up. But so you don't just because you get the queen later on in the season, do not think that that uh, you got. Them. If, if any of y'all have ever seen a swarm moving into wherever it's going to land, wherever it's going to settle, it, it's just this amazing sound as well as sight because the air is just thick with bees. I mean, it's just thick with bees. And the really, really great part about that is they will not stay. They're not going to stay at that point. Um, they've got no interest in, 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 in staying because they know they're going to die. So they're not going to stay. So you, can, you don't soup when, 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 when in those instances um, and I had I had one uh, this year and, I, and I've got the, the slide of this one um, where the lady called me and said she's got bees underneath her house I went to the house and I get there I go underneath the house I saw some bees and, I, and so I, I thought the hive was on there went underneath there there's no bees so these bees that were coming were just scalp bees that's all we tell the, the scalp. Um, so I said, well, look, I, I've got my trap in the box, in the truck. I'll go ahead and set the trap. So I took the trap, put it on, on some rocks underneath the house, set it up, and went to the front of the house, and I started talking to it, and I turned around, and here comes the swarm. The spin I mean, the air, you could, you, I heard it, and I turned around, and saw it coming in. So, uh, as I'm looking, I said, well, let, let me go get my queen catcher. So I went and I got my queen catcher. And, and he said that the, the queen will land and they, they, they but that's not true. She's, she's flying around. And, and as the swarm is landing or coming in, investigating, she's still flying around. And um, so I'm, I'm there on the side of the house, just sitting down, looking, looking at any time, any kind of cluster, any group of bees. Because that's, that's where she's going to, you're going to find her. Um, and I'm looking, and boom, there she is, I saw her. So I, I caught her, I caught the queen, and, and I, uh, I had the video camera going, and, and I said, there she is. And as soon as I did that, there was another queen in, uh, bee in the cage, just enough, boom, she flew out. I said, oh. I didn't think I was going to catch her after that. Guess what? Guess where I caught her? 
the exact same spot she landed. The exact same spot. I had uh, I had one two or three years ago, and it, I, I call that that video the uh, the epic battle or the epic swarm catch or whatever. Because I chased this queen from uh, from the track. But I, I pulled him out of the house, I was putting him in the box, saw the queen, put her in, in my cave. I didn't know if the cave was damaged. And and she flew out. And she flew out and she went about 60 feet into a, a, a little holly tree. And all the bees, whoo, they flew out and followed her. So I climbed this, this holly tree and it was up about 30 feet. And uh, I, would, I, I saw where the bees were clustering. And I, I took the branch and I shook the branch just because I'm trying to locate the queen. And I saw the queen and I went to get her. I, got, I caught her again and she flew out again. I still it didn't, it still didn't dawn on me that there'd be something wrong with my trap, my cage. And I said, what? And, and sure enough, that queen landed in the exact same spot that I caught her the last time. And so then this time I said, oh, I'm gonna, if I catch her again, I'm going to hold it. So sure enough, she lands again. I think I, I think that happened at least four more times. That to shake the, the, the tree to be able to find the queen because they fly off. The whole they come right back. They fly off. They come back. And finally, I caught the queen. And this time, I grabbed her. Now that cluster of bees was 30 feet up in the air. I came down. I came down. Had my box set. My, set that queen. I had. I, I put a rubber band around the cage to make sure she could get out. I put her down on side. Of, uh, on side of, inside of, on, on top of my trap, and within two minutes, all those bees came right down to me. Every one of them came right down to me. I'm afraid to ask what you're doing. <laughs> uh, what you do when you have some virgin queens with the swarm? Say it again. When you have other queens, the virgin queens with the swarm, do you make splits with them or? Yeah, I do. I, you, you, yeah, you want it. You don't. You don't want to waste the queen. So, so yeah, you make two hives from if they're multiple queens. Make two hives from it. Um, some I had one of them. They decided I, they were in the box. There were two queens, and they, they were divided. So I just took whatever one they were, and I put them in two boxes, and it's a done deal. That was very unusual. That does not happen. Like that was just a free thing. That's all. But um, yeah, if you have a, um, there's no sense in. in Killing one of the queens because the bees, you can. The bees are looking for a queen. They want their mom. They want a mom, and, and I'm happy to give them one. Yeah. That was the first one that I caught last year. I caught her on my mom's birthday. That's how I did. That's a February nine that I, I caught that swarm. And this little carpet, this is one I told you I caught ten swarms under this carpet. Remember I told you about the nukes. Uh, and so this was later on in the season. Um, and, you know, the, the swarm, didn't, believe it or not, they, they were inside that fire frame completely full up. But these were the, the outside. This right here, um, two slides ago where I showed that, that box that was behind it, that was the swarm of bees that got put in the back. This is a, this is a, this may have been the first one uh, after that one day. It moved into that dead tree. And, and you can catch, if you can catch a swarm within 24, 48 hours after it moves in, oh, they're really easy to move where, um, where they moved into it. How do you do it? Honey run. Or whatever, be quick, whatever, whatever stuff you want to use to chase bees um, when you're cleaning your honey supers. It was really, really good. So this is, I always like to say that, that this swarm right here is uh, the size of the swarm that my buddy, the 628 Derby, catches. Um, because he likes to catch little swarms like this, and I like to catch big swarms. So this one uh, is just a little baby swarm, and uh, I, I put a, uh, made a little two frame new form. They stayed there for three days, but they didn't like that either. But I gotta apologize for running out of battery again. I was shooting all kind of video and not paying attention to what my battery was doing. And at the end of our, at the end of my presentation, the battery went out, and I didn't even, I couldn't even close the video at, at the conference today. 
So I came home this evening, and uh, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up today. It really was it really was a great convention. I mean, I got to talk to some great people, met new people, uh, got set up to uh, to do more cutouts and, and, and with other people. It's it's just a, a really good experience going to the uh, the LBA, and I was really grateful that I attended. So that's all I have for you in this video. Um, thanks for watching. Keep on watching, and I'll be making more. God bless. Oh yeah. Um, don't forget, you got to keep Christ in Christmas too. Mr. Ed, I'm out of here until the next video. <laughs> Look at this, Jennifer and John. Yeah, Randy. Yeah, we're just about to leave. <laughs> you were? Yeah, we're just about to leave. You, you didn't get here on time. <laughs> Good to see you, JP. <laughs> Look who that is, folks. Look at this. It's Shawi. Morning, all. Shawi, what are you doing here, Shawi? Oh, uh, taking a vacation. Uh, from what? You don't work. <laughs> I work as much as you. Hey. You work? No, I don't work. Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? When you when you take it easy on your vacation, you are looking good, dude. That's right, dude. You are looking hey, really good. And I feel good, too. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Shelby. No problem, man. Welcome back to the 628 Dirt Rooster channel, where Hobby Beekeeping is a way of life. No, that's not this channel. Oh, it's not? No, it's not. I thought you said a real beekeeper was oh, going to be here. <laughs>